But first, the south side of Chicago has long been plagued with some of the highest crime rates in the nation. But one man is trying to transform this area by focusing on the everyday needs and the health of those who live there. Jeffrey Brown has our story. Along this stretch on Chicago's south side, Rami Nashashibi is a familiar face. He's the founder of the nonprofit Iman, the inner city Muslim action network. And for more than 20 years, he's focused on the root problems these neighborhoods face. So violence, poverty, lack of real meaningful job opportunities, lots of young people with very few meaningful trajectories. This set of blocks was ravaged by the foreclosure crisis. Nasha Shibi grew up the son of a Jordanian diplomat. He first came to the U.S. for college and later got a Ph.D. in sociology from the University of Chicago. He started Iman in 1997 to help bridge divides he saw between Muslim immigrants and African Americans. The organization has grown ever since and now has an annual budget of nearly $4 million, with funding from a mix of grants and private donations. This is social activism, he says, grounded in faith. We've been unapologetically rooted in the values and spiritual tradition that comes from the Muslim community, while at the same time acknowledging that so much of that is also very universal. One major focus of the organization, neighborhood corner stores. The small shops that many here rely on in the absence of supermarkets in these neighborhoods. But also places that have historically generated tensions between the Arab immigrants who own them and their African-American customers. Iman is trying to change that. That corner store doesn't have to be uh, what many corner stores in Chicago are, often a place of death, not a spot that you really want to go into, that we could radically reimagine it. At the Morgan Mini Mart in Englewood, store owner Sammy Defala, who immigrated from Palestine, is one of 60 store owners in the area who've signed on to Iman's corner store campaign. We've been in the neighborhood for 27 years. So some information on the benefits of eating fruits. The idea is to bring everyone together around a common need, fresh and more healthy food. We've stepped it up. With their help, we've been able to acquire uh, fruits and vegetables that are subsidized a lot lower price, and in turn, we sell them at a lot lower price. Ah. So that way, it's a win-win, right? And it is much needed, says Iman Shamar Hemphill. You know, it's a war on nutrition that's constantly killing our communities. Black men um, die at, at higher rates, uh, contributing to their diet, right? How are you going to change anything in your neighborhood if you really can't start with the place that really sustains the neighborhood, and that's the food? Sammy Defala says in the process, a new trust has emerged between him and his customers. People talk. People in the community talk. Hey, listen, that guy is a good guy there. You know, you don't want to go in there and, and do him any harm or any wrong. Deep breath. Just a few blocks away, Iman also operates a free health clinic. All set. Here, physician's assistant Muna Ode, whose family immigrated from Palestine, treats many like 58-year-old Jerome Reynolds, a diabetic without insurance. People who are underserved and often forgotten. And a lot of times they feel that they are not in control of their situation and not in control of their health because of their limited access to, to funds and insurance and things like that. What are you eating at night? Here, too, there's an emphasis on making better food choices. Can you come in next week and we, we talk about your medications? And there's another benefit to this interaction, Muna Ode says, a better understanding of Muslim Americans. All they know is what they see on TV, and, and obviously that's not ever painted in the best light. And that's especially important for me being a, a Muslim female who's... Um, who's covered, who wears a hijab. It shows them that we are the same and our, our struggles are all the same. Dr. Angela Odoms-Young, a professor of nutrition at the University of Illinois, Chicago, is studying Iman's work. She sees positive results. Traditionally, we used to focus on individuals. Can you make a good decision when it comes to healthy eating? We now know from a research perspective that community matters. It's really important that you have access to fruits and vegetables, not just what you can do as an individual. Odoms Young says that Iman is helping to break a long-held myth that residents of low-income communities simply don't want healthier food. There's many people 
in low-income communities and communities of color that they're very interested in having access to healthy food options. Mm -hmm. But one of the big problems is the structural barriers. Another structural barrier being tackled here, finding jobs for men like Khalid Party, a former gang member and drug dealer. I did 14 years in federal prison. After his release, Party earned a technical degree in heating and air conditioning ventilation. I graduated in a year and a half at the top of my class. He credits Nashashibi with helping to turn around his life and now teaches construction skills to men recently released from prison. Part of Iman's reentry program that was designed to provide both jobs and to fix up abandoned homes in the neighborhood. When these guys come out of prison, if we can try to get them a trade quickly or get them accustomed to being in a working condition, getting up in the morning and coming to class or getting up, going to work, you start making better decisions. You know, you start taking less chances because your responsibility, you got more people that rely on you now. For Rami Nashashibi, it's all part of meeting the needs of residents in these often neglected neighborhoods. But even after 20 years, he admits that far more work is needed. You know, for every one person you're able to employ, there's 50 that are looking for jobs. Yeah. You're, for every block that you stabilize, there's the sense that, you know, there's 25, 35 blocks that need that exact same intervention. Brothers and sisters being Undaunted, Iman is actually expanding. It's opened a new center in Atlanta and hopes to work in other cities around the nation. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Chicago.